Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Tutorial Thursdays. This one's pretty special because I'm actually going to share a part of filmmaking, a part of the freelance side of filmmaking that I think can be really powerful for up and coming filmmakers, for established filmmakers, for really anyone, because it can be a playing ground to be creative and to express yourself in different ways. And it can also be a great way to grow and to connect with artists. So for this episode, we're actually going to look at the technical side of it. And I'm going to dive into more of the shooting, more of the relationship side later on in tomorrow's episode. So definitely don't miss out on that. But for now, I'm going to show you a few of the tricks of what I have to do when I have to edit together multiple takes from a live session recording. The editing techniques that we're looking at today can actually be mapped into any other form of editing. So short films, especially music videos, especially music videos that have performance pieces in them, whether that's choreography or just a singer or whatever. So let's jump into it and I just wanna show you guys my workflow of when I have to deal with these type of videos. So the first step is syncing. I'm gonna throw in all of my takes onto my timeline. Now, sometimes you're not gonna have full takes because the, you'll get something maybe during a rehearsal. And since I was pressed with time, I was able to get this extra coverage of the backup singers, but that is not a full take. So you'll have these kind of odd clips out that you'll have to adjust later on and see where they fit in the overall take. But for the most part, when I'm laying down the takes that I took from that day, I'm putting the entire thing on the timeline and I'm roughly trying to sync each of those waveforms together. Now they're sometimes not gonna match up perfectly depending on the type of music, the type of performance that it is because there might be slight differences in the kick and the snare or how tight the guitar is, especially when there's live session recordings and there's a lot of experimentation happening. A lot of times that you're not gonna match them perfectly, but this stage is not about that. You just wanna get it as close as you can and then later on, once you add the final mix track, that's gonna be your main sync. So once you've done all of your cuts and all your Select, like we'll see in a moment, then you can do a final sync, sort of say, with just nudging clips a little bit around based on the waveform of that final mix that you'll get. Okay, so now that I've done all of that, my next step is going down this list of takes essentially that I have on my timeline and select the best moments out of each of these layers. So I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to just let it play and see if anything catches my eye. So some of the things that I'm looking for are the camera angle, the performance of the what I'm mainly focusing on, and also if it is actually in focus on the camera. So these are all things that I'm kind of looking out for. And for example, here I see that the camera has a nice move, but it kind of goes out of focus. So I'm not gonna use anything else beyond this point. So that's gonna be my first cut, and I'm just gonna keep moving and keep selecting moments that I, I think are, are nice in, in all of that take. And this is very generic. This is very broad strokes kind of making selections because I'm not making an edit yet. I just want to see how much good material, how much of the best of the best of what I shot do I actually have to intercut and to play with. Then later on, we're going to see how you can really create something that flows together and, and more fine tuned editing. But for right now, just keep it very broad. You're just skimming through all this material and you're just seeing what you have. As I'm going through each of these sections, I'm actually labeling the good stuff with another color and I'm just keeping whatever I don't need in the default bluish color that these layers have. So this one's a good take. So I'm gonna just hit control click and right click it if you're on a PC. And I'm just gonna go under label and notice how I'm selecting violet. It doesn't really matter what color, but I'm just starting with the top of the list since this layer is also at the top of my list in my timeline. So it, it's, just a, it's just an easier way for me to see, okay, what color they already use and just keep going down. And it's a great way to actually color code parts of your take or the full takes. So for example, you could have mango for the drummer sections or pink for the backup singers. And you can even make sticky notes or notes somewhere and you can at least keep track of what is what this way by using color labels. Okay, so that's what that looks like once I've gone through uh, some of the good moments. 
Now let's move on and go to the next one. And I'm going to do the same thing, but of course now I'm just going to solo the audio track that I've selected here, since all of these are paired with the video. Unsolo the other one. And then I'm also going to turn off the top layer. So I'm going to just toggle this off so that it can reveal whatever is underneath it. And now I can see the clip that I've selected. And I'm going to repeat the same process again for this one. Just looking for good moments. I like this beginning here. Might even use it for the opening. Not sure. So I'll mark that. Not great. The movement is a little jerky. And not sure if I can fix that a little bit. But, you know, for now, let's just la label it Iris. And actually, that's the same color. So we're going we're gonna to label it the next one down. So Caribbean. That flare is a bit distracting. Not sure if I'm going to use most of that, but not using that zoom in for sure. There we go. That's a good end point for that. Label Caribbean. I love close ups, like super intense close ups that just show emotion. And like I love seeing that. Like he's really feeling what he's saying. And I want to see that in his face. And a big relief, usually when I go through this, is seeing moments that I didn't have in the previous take kind of intersecting with what I'm doing now. So that's that's a relief just because I know that I'm not going to have a gap, that at least I'm going to have something. And the more of that that happens, the more that you see that now I have all the pieces that I need. It's just a matter of getting them all together in the right way. Now, something else that I want to mention too, as I'm going through this, is that you don't have to use this specific part for that specific course. I mean, obviously, it's better if you do it that way to stay true to the performance. But if you're absolutely missing something, you know, you obviously you can't re-record. So you can get away with maybe overlapping some things that were in the second chorus to the first one if it comes down to that, if you're missing pieces. I try to avoid it because I, I love capturing the truth of what is being given to camera in that moment specifically to when it happens in the song. But, you know. If it ever happens to you that you absolutely need to do something about it, that's what you would do. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like once I've done all of my selections. Now, all I'm left to do is just delete any empty spaces. But before I do that into this timeline, I'm actually going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to copy and paste it. And now I'm going to double click on that so that we can edit that. And essentially what we're creating over time is these backups so that if we ever need to revert to any one of these main stages, because if there's ever a need to go back and grab something, maybe even from these outtakes for the sake of transitions or whatever the case may be, I can go back to this version, find it, copy and paste it in my new timeline or do whatever I need to do. But having backups can be really powerful and can save you a lot of headaches. Okay, so let's start the process. I'm just gonna very quickly just delete all these gaps because this way we can actually start the real editing process. And it's easy to do at first because you just have to delete any uh, non-colored or I guess iris colored block that you see in your timeline. But it gets trickier as you uh, move on to elements or to parts of the song that actually are good and they overlap with each other. Like for example, in this instance, I know that I have two options. So it's it just becomes a matter of looking at each one of those clips and those takes and seeing, okay, what moment do I really want to represent in this moment of the song? And then pick whatever camera angle worked for that accordingly. Okay, so now since I'm going into more detailed editing, I want to make sure I'm doing things right with the actual track that we're going to be using the final mix. So I'm going to drop in the main audio file of the actual recording from the studio so that I can now sync all of my takes to that main audio track. I know that I'm starting my video with this shot, this opening sequence here. So I'm going to look at whatever waveform or audio track corresponds to this clip or this take, and I'm going to solo that layer. And then I'm also going to solo the track that I just brought in, which is the overall final mix. This way, for this section alone, I'm just going to make sure that everything is in sync. And essentially, I'm going to keep doing that for every single one of these sections because the tempo changes slightly from recording to recording and can even be a little bit different from the final mix. So these are things that I like to always go individually through and making sure that everything is perfect to the frame. Because if it's a live session, especially for musicians, it's probably going to be watched and listened to by musicians. So you definitely don't want to have anything that's a quarter off or, or, or delayed kick or something like that, or maybe 
some bad lip sync. So you definitely want to make sure that you're looking out for those things. Now, one last thing that I'll leave you guys with is what happens when the performance doesn't exactly match up within the same take, within that same section that you've selected. It doesn't match up with the final mix. So in my case here, you can see that it's very obvious that the strumming is a little bit off. So if you're trying to stay on the stake because you like the camera move or you don't have much other coverage, so you can't hide this with a cut, the only solution you have is time remapping the clip. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed up and slow down very slightly, maybe by five or 6% those portions of this section to match up with the correct beat of the main track. And we've seen this before, so all you have to do is expand the video that you want to time remap and then right click on the effects icon on the left corner of it. And then from there, you're gonna go under speed, time remapping, and now you can add keyframes by clicking on this line and adjust timing. All right, guys, so there's honestly a lot more that we can go into as far as editing live sessions and the whole world of capturing performances. So I'm definitely gonna probably break down other aspects of this in the future videos. If there's anything specific that you want me to highlight or talk about, let me know in the comments section below and tune in tomorrow because I'm actually gonna share some of the key ideas to keep in mind when shooting, when planning for live session shoots, and we get into a few of the reasons of why shooting live sessions could be really beneficial to you as a filmmaker. So definitely don't miss out on that. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Truini for Chris Gar, and I'll see you tomorrow.